if you do a quick Google search of natural red hair men, you're gonna find a surprising number of women. Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're doing another hair tutorial, natural redheads, but you already knew that from the title. So here's the first one that I ever did and while the highlights are in the wrong spot, it's still a pretty nice color. Today, we're gonna get his hair all nice and natural red. And the first thing I wanna point out is if you do a quick Google search of natural red hair men, you're gonna find a surprising number of women. But beyond that, you're also gonna see that a lot of red hair actually looks orange, not red, if you are actually to really deep dive into that color. So we achieve that through a couple different ways. And if you remember from the blonde hair video, all variations, I shouldn't say all, most variations of hair colors are actually different shades of brown. So just like blonde isn't actually yellow, redheads aren't actually red. So we're gonna go ahead and explore that and today I'm going to show you, we're going to start with actually just a few of my favorites that I like to use because I do like mixing it up. I don't like using the same exact formula every time. Here I have both Scale 75 as well as Reaper Chestnut Brown. Those are some of my favorites to use. Also, if I am going more into the red than orange category, like I did with that first bust, we have a nice deep brown medium rust, brick red, this is huge miniatures, and these are both AK. Again, any variation, and you can find a whole lot of different options. Here's some more Reaper, goblin skin. So if I'm going for a real ginger redhead where it's more of that orange, that's a good color to use. Now, when you're doing an orange like that, you want to make sure your red, your shadow tone is definitely more red based than brown based. And you want to make sure that your highlight doesn't get too washed out too quickly. Here we have uh, Auburn Shadow, which is another nice red from Reaper. And again, these are just brown reds. So I'll get in focus here. So not true reds. Today the colors we're going to be using is scale 75 brown leather. That's our shadow color. Then we're going into tarnished copper which I know looks kind of red here at the top but if you look down at the bottom it's that more orangish look. And then AK decomposed flesh. That's going to be our highlight. Your highlights with red are going to be the same kind of highlights you use with the blonde. You want to go into those blonde categories and if you really look closely at the redheads online their highlights actually go into blonde and frequently all the way up to white so the first thing i'm going to do i'm sure you guys are going to find it very very exciting well the first thing i want to do is talk about how absolutely amazing, awesome my brand new camera here is. I think we're going to have great results and you guys are going to be able to see a lot more. As you can tell, all I'm doing is base coating. So I am getting a layer of the brown leather down and we're going to cover his entire face with it. And two points for anyone who, right now, in the comments, quick, 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 before I answer, tells me what the next step is if I put down a layer of this. Two points, anyone, anyone, time's up. Okay, yes, of course, it's a second coat of the same exact paint. So we want to make sure we have full coverage, especially on our base layer. So that is what I'm going to be doing. I am not going to bore you guys with watching this whole process. 
Enjoy the magic of editing, and I will be back when his entire hair is based out with our brown leather. We're back. So he has two coats of our shadow tone. So now what we're going to do is just layer up with our mid-tone, which is the Reaper's Tarnished Copper. And we're just going to add this in. Now remember when you're doing this, you want to leave some of the shadows showing. That's the key part of layering up. You don't want to cover all of what you just did. Otherwise you made, you know, painting the shadow color first completely useless. Except for the fact that it does add vibrancy underneath. So, I'm going to keep going around with this. And I'm sure you can already see, just like I can, definitely going to need a second coat of this. So, that's going to be my next step, is just painting the mid-tone over most of it, leaving some of that shadow behind, shadow color. And then I will be back to show you all of our highlighting steps. And for highlighting, I'm actually going to show you the entire process, so every stroke that I put down. I just feel like by this point you've been watching enough of my videos, hopefully. If not, why not? Maybe you just found me? Cool. Welcome. Glad you're here. If you found me, you probably found others and they say a lot of the same things because that's just the way layering technique is done. So I'm going to take care of this because again, I'm going to assume you already know. If you don't, for any reason, again, maybe you just found me, I have a video so I'm going to go ahead and link that. You can find that in either the cards or the description below or in the playlist, the tutorials playlist. So, all right, and I will be right back. Here we are, uh, and you can see we have the tarnished copper all done. And one of the things that I want to point out uh, in case you noticed at the beginning, you probably did when I was first putting in the tarnished copper. I said I would definitely need two coats. Yeah, it was actually three. It's important when you're doing layering that you give yourself however many layers you need to get to full opacity. Again, our acrylic paints are translucent, so you're going to see the colors through the bottom. We take advantage of this by putting our shadows down first to give us more vibrancy in the higher layers, the more we do, because you're going to see all that depth of the color underneath through that transparency. But at some point when you're trying to get those layers all the way up, you really need to make sure you're hitting all those layers. Otherwise, especially when it comes to the red hair, the jump to the highlight is going to be too stark and you're going to be like, oh my gosh, this looks terrible. And chances are that's going to be because you did not get to the mid-tone fully. You have to get all the way up there. And when you're starting from a dark color like I did, it's kind of difficult. You can see all the undertones where it was left underneath in the back here. And in these areas up here, we're going to reestablish some of that at the end. That's our final step. You probably remember from all the other hair tutorials if you've seen them. If this is your first one, I definitely recommend checking them out because there's plenty of other things that I want to address here, so I may not get to that. But we're going to go ahead and start with the first highlight. And especially with hair, also I want to point out with the rest of this figure, 
there is more than one mid-tone. There is more than one highlight color. When you're trying to get to the best results, you know, it's not going to be the fastest, but you can get there with a lot of different color variances and by doing multiple highlights to get that extra contrast. Contrast makes the models and also just more visual interest. You know, this skin is definitely far more interesting than my first one over here because this one only has one shadow, one highlight color, and that's it. But here we have a full range and our skin looks far more realistic. So let me know if you want me to do a video on more defined skin tones. I do know that a lot of you want quick and fast and unfortunately the best results are not quick and fast. They're putting the time in. We're going to go ahead and start with those highlights now. And this is a two to one ratio and it is two tarnished copper to one of the decomposed flesh. Yes, that sounds fantastic when I'm when I'm actually doing it. But if you look, it's a very nice ivory color, you know, off-white, very yellow, and one of the things that I really like about it is it has a lot of it has a tint of green in it and red and green are complementary colors one of these days i'll get around to doing a color theory video because it does play into it but red and green being complementary means that they add a little bit of extra contrast so by using a color with a touch of green I'm sort of adding that back in, that extra contrast, without doing a whole lot of extra work. So that's why I would definitely recommend checking out color theory, because a lot of times that's where you can do, you can make big results while still saving some time just by knowing certain things. So... Again, one of these days I'll get around to that video. There is a long list of videos that I'm trying to do. In fact, I'm actually already planning on filming two more this week so that we can try and get ahead. We post videos here every other Saturday and occasionally a little bit more. I do try for a little more if I can, but somebody who paints commissions and has a full-time job and YouTube, <laughs> you can see where that can get a little bit out of hand. My time does get away from me, and that doesn't include everything I have to do with editing, and I've actually wrangled Ben into that, so... Ben's been doing all the editing that you've seen lately. I don't even know what's in half the videos anymore. So that's kind of fun. You guys will have to let me know if there's anything bad. I do respond to every comment you guys make. So any video, if you comment, no matter when you've you've seen it and con uh, commented, I'm going to go ahead and respond personally. That I don't delegate to Ben. So you're going to hear from me directly. That's my favorite part, honestly. That's why I do this. Uh, I love the community and I just really want to give back. All right. So as you can see, we've got some pretty stark contrast with the color there. But imagine if I only did two layers and the mid-tone was even darker, how much more stark that would be. So now I'm going to move on to the next mid-tone, or I'm sorry, the next highlight. And this is a 
This is going to be a one-to-one -one ratio. The decomposed flesh and the tarnished copper. Okay, and definitely let me know what you guys think about uh, the video because this should be doing fairly well. Unfortunately, I can't see it as well while I'm painting. So occasionally I have to stop and look down and try and make sure I'm still in focus. But it does seem to be a lot better than the old one. So fingers crossed, that was the whole point of it. Okay, and as you can see, I'm not covering all of the previous layer. I'm leaving some of that there. And just working my way around. Now the other thing about some of these highlights is they're not going to go as high. So right back here I have the sun coming from this way, the light source. So these spots are going to get a little highlighted, but they're certainly not going to hit the same highlights as the top and the front of the, the hair. So that's probably as high as those two are going to go, and then they're going to drop off. And you'll see as we're going with the rest of these highlights, as always, it's going to get a smaller and smaller area. So we're going to start going faster and faster with these other layers, which is why uh, I can definitely encourage you to do more layers on the highlights. You know, if you want to cut some time somewhere, one layer of shadow color is all I did. That's it. We don't really need to go very high on it. But with the highlights and the midtones, I really want to make sure that I'm hitting all of it. And again, with the bottom here, the sun is the light source is going to fade away. So that's going to be as high as that goes. And I'm going to come around to the front. bit more in his eyebrows here. I don't like to highlight the eyebrows too much so I'm just going to do a little bit there and then at the end I'm going to glaze them to kind of put them a little more back in line. I, I just feel like eyebrows are usually better when they're darker so that's what I'm going to try and keep with. And then we've got a beard here. I think this is some of my first facial hair that I'm painting on camera. You know, I've done a lot of beautiful women models, and I tend to not get so many of the men done on camera. No particular reason. It just... Sometimes it's just what I feel like painting, and sometimes it's what's the best model for the... video I'm trying to do or you know <laughs> the fastest one for us to be able to find and print in time depending on <laughs> what our timelines looking like all right moving up we're gonna do two more shades of highlights here before moving on to our final steps so this one is going to be you guessed it two to one two decomposed flush to one part of the tarnished copper. And once again, we're taking this less. So we're taking it down more. And I'm also, with these long strands that are getting highlighted, you know, we always highlight the crown these strands I kind of want to break up a little bit because we want to show a little bit more 
depth of field. We don't want it all to end up looking too blonde. That is not our intent. sure how officially right this is but this is the way I do it and uh, if somebody doesn't like the way I'm doing or knows a better way I would love it if you would let me know in the comments I am always open to hearing suggestions and learning more I think learning when it comes to miniature painting is so important for us to continue doing you know I'm I've spent over a year now, I have not been able to, uh, you know, I said I wasn't going to do it, but I think I'm going to do just a smidge right there. Over a year, I haven't heard of a new term for or technique that I don't know how to do for miniature painting, but I do not have all of them mastered. And uh, even the people who I think my opinion is they have a mastered will tell you they don't have a mastered and that they're still learning. So it is such a great idea to just always be open to learning and wanting to know new things. So I definitely want to know better ways to do hair, better ways to do skin. Even though you might be looking at mine going, that's the best skin I've ever seen. Because I gotta admit, even I'm impressed with that skin. And I did it, and I can't believe I did it. Because it's not usually the skin tone that I, I tend to do. But I was trying something new, and it worked really, really well. So again, keep going out there, keep learning, and keep uh, checking out other videos from other painters as well because sometimes they just say the right thing and it suddenly clicks so you never know where the right info is going to come from. Hopefully it's me at least a little bit of the time. Otherwise I don't know why you're watching because I'm not funny or entertaining in any great way uh, that I know of. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, I try to be, but, you know, not great at it. Not my strong suit that I know of. Mostly because I'm talking to myself. And I work better with it. other people bouncing off ideas. Okay. So what I'm doing is the highest highlight. This is just pure decomposed flesh which still sounds so disgusting that I'm putting it in his hair. I love it. It's uh, my little twi sick and twisted side coming out. So. All right. And there we go. I'm going to do a few more touch-ups here in the beard, just in this main section. Okay. And now I feel like we have all of our highlights placed. So I'm going to do just a, a few more little steps. Just bear with me. First thing we're going to do is go back to our shadow color and we're going to reinforce some lines. So in order to do this, you need a, to not be throwing your or dropping your paintbrush all over. First off, okay, got that. We need a good amount of water on the paintbrush. So we've got that. 
and now I am going to twist it to make that really fine sharp point okay so once we've got that perfect point we're going to load up the brush with some paint and we take our little wet bed paper towel here and I'm going to reform that same twist so I've got this nice sharp edge and this is going to help me make thin lines super thin lines the other thing about it is you cannot press too hard so you want to do very light lines and I've been talking so much my brush went dry so let me do this a little bit faster so I actually get some water on it some very nice thin lines and we're just breaking up some of the hairs and bringing reinforcing some of the shadows because hairs are strands they're not in chunks like this so we definitely want to resemble those hairs a little bit and I need to pour a little more paint and I just looked down and also saw how little time, or well, how I should say how much time that uh, I've been taking. So I'm gonna try and speed this up so the video isn't three hours long for you. But the best way to, to remember light brush strokes is if you think about when you put a paintbrush down if you push it down, the more pressure you apply, the wider those brushes spread out, those bristles spread out. And especially when we're doing details, that's what we don't want. So you wanna make sure that you keep to the lightest touches. And you wanna keep a lot of water on your brush because that's what makes the paint flow off of it. And if you do real uh, if your brush starts getting dry you're not going to be getting the paint off of it anymore and your instinct is going to be to push on it push harder to get the paint off but that is counterintuitive that's going to just spread out your bristles and then you won't have sharp smooth lines anymore so there we go I also want to add a bit more brown. I'm going a little bit thicker over here. This is my shadow side and I kind of did it a bit heavy so I want to kind of reinforce a little more shadow in that area. There we go. And now we're going to come up here and same thing up here. I'm just going to be doing these light little lines. And I'm going to continue that. The next thing I'm going to do after that is I'm going to glaze those eyebrows, uh, like I had mentioned before. And then I am going to go ahead and do the headband and the little wraps in his hair so that the whole project is finished. Okay, so. Uh, one more thing, as I was doing the final touch-ups with the hair, I actually did decide to go through and add a glaze, not just to his eyebrows, oh, which you can't see because the focus decided to move, to not just his eyebrows, uh, but also around his hair to bring more of that red in. So don't be afraid to go ahead and do that step if you... Uh, feel like it's going a little too blonde or a little too brown from the highlights or shadows, go ahead and glaze some more in and, and get to the shade that you like best. So just wanted to put that out there and make you aware so that you don't feel like I'm skipping any steps on you. If you liked it, please uh, give us a like, share all those fun things that are you know down below. Check out some of those other videos I mentioned. 
Uh, you can also check out our website and our uh, shopping list for any of the tools that we buy, as well as some discounts on some of those. They are Amazon affiliate links, so we do get a little kickback for you shopping, but you don't pay any extra. So that's pretty nice. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Leave me a note. Let me know what you thought. And until next time, have fun and keep creating.